morning. Um, I know we're the last of the presenters, so bear with us. I'd like to thank Dr. Mauro Baldessari for inviting us to be part of this program today to talk about how we have interpreted the implementation of the Italian and Italian American Heritage Curriculum in our district. First of all, I just want to share a little bit about our district. We are in Atlantic County in South Jersey. Those of you who drive on the Garden State Parkway, you can reach one of our three high schools between Exit 44 and the Atlantic City Expressway. We have Absagami High School in Galloway, Cedar Creek High School in Egg Harbor City, and Oakcrest High School in Mays Landing. We are a comprehensive high school district. We have approximately 3,200 students throughout the district. Our geographic area encompasses about 293 square miles, so we are fairly large. Our district pop student population is representative of the multicultural society in which we live, and there are over 30 languages spoken in the homes of our students as their primary language, so very ethnically diverse. All of our schools are Title I schools, and that means that over 40% of our student population is on free and reduced lunches. They're eligible for that. So not only are we ethnically diverse, but we are economically diverse. We do have a thriving advanced placement program in each of our buildings. We offer several dual credit courses with our local colleges and universities. We have six magnet programs in our schools that range from engineering and biomedical sciences to Air Force Junior ROTC in aerospace science and leadership. And yes, we do have an Italian language program at Oakcrest High School. Um, <laughs> so we're extremely proud of the academic programs that we run throughout our district. They're challenging, they're relevant, and they're rigorous. And when we evaluate curriculum to be implemented in our schools, we look for three different things. First, does the curriculum address the standards that we are required to teach our students? Um, does it help the students better their skills so they can become college and career ready upon graduation? Second, does the curriculum engage students in relevant real life learning? so that their understanding can be deepened and they can transfer their learning from one context to another. And third, is the curriculum fluid? Does it change a little bit over time and do teachers have the ability to modify it to meet the diverse needs of the learners in their classrooms? So when we reviewed the curriculum developed by the um, Italian and Italian American Heritage Curriculum, we found that it really met our needs and we were very excited to be able to offer that opportunity to our students. And when we looked at the curriculum, we looked at the word universality, and we did not necessarily just say, let's implement it in our world language classes. So uh, Mrs. Resch is gonna talk about how an English teacher and a social studies teacher took some of those lessons and implemented it in a cohort setting with a group of English students and world history students. And while the curriculum focuses on the achievements and experiences of Italian Americans, and students can learn the stories of Italian Americans and Italians, they really are learning the story of all Americans and the American immigrant experience. Character education is woven throughout the curriculum. Students learn about stereotypes and develop a tolerance for other cultures. So I'd like to turn it over to Mrs. Uh, Resch, who is going to talk to you about her experiences. Okay, um, I'd first like to thank you all for inviting um, us to represent Oakcrest High School. It's a great honor, not only because I've been teaching at this school for 13 years, but um, I'm also a graduate of that high school, and I learned today that Alexandra's mother is also a graduate of that high school. Um, before I explain why I chose this particular lesson, I would like to just give you a little background on the class. So this is the lesson that we chose, Darwinism and the Anti-American Sentiment. Mrs. Blair already mentioned to you that this was taught in a cohort setting, so that basically means that I'm the, um, the ninth grade world history teacher, and my partner, Emily Rock, teaches English one. So we teach for 45 minutes, and then we switch classes. So that gives us an opportunity 
to teach a 90 minute block um, and if we feel appropriate, if we plan something um, interdisciplinary for that day. So this lesson that we taught was actually going to be 90 minutes. You'll see an eight minute clip, so um, I'll give you a little background information of the lesson before you see um, the video. All right, so um, I was approached by our supervisor of English, his name's Joe Costal, to teach a lesson at the end of the year on um, Italian Americans. And I have to be completely honest with you that when he came to me, I think it was in May, and asked me to teach this lesson, my first thing that I wanted to say to him was, I absolutely have no time for this. Um, I was thinking, I have, it's the end of the school year, I have all of these things that I need to finish by um, finals. So, um, I was kind of also thinking, I'm not the U.S. history teacher. You know, I teach world history, how does this really, how does this apply to me? But I didn't say that to him, because I have great respect for him. Um, and I also figured, if he's coming to me and he's asking me to do this, he must have, you know, confidence that I'll do a nice job. So, I, I ultimately felt honored that he did ask me and my cohort partner, Emily Rock. Um, so that's when I started reading through all of the lessons, and I realized that I was completely wrong um, about thinking that these lessons might not apply to me. I found that the content, the learning activities, and the resources that were provided in so many of these lessons, I could incorporate them into units that I had taught all year. And I also realized that the lesson that I had just finished up which was a lesson on imperialism, that I found a lesson that I could use that would fit perfectly. So that's where we chose um, Darwinism and the anti-Italian sentiment. <clears throat> so the lesson I just finished up was a lesson on imperialism. So this is where you have in Europe, um, in the late 1800s, they had just gone through the Industrial Revolution and they were going around to lesser developed countries throughout the world and they were colonizing them. And they were using um, a sociological theory known as social Darwinism to justify taking over other people's lands. They were looking for their natural resources and they were also looking for new markets to sell their finished goods to. So my students already knew about this. We had already studied social Darwinism. They understood um, how people were using this science to justify uh, white superiority throughout the world. What they didn't know was that within the Caucasians themselves that there was a hierarchy that existed and that hierarchy had to do with the complexion of their skin. Um, they didn't realize that this hierarchy that was created actually affected immigration in the early 1900s in the United States. When I saw this lesson, um, I realized that this was going to enable me to make a connection between what they had already learned and what actually persists today, which are lingering discrimination and stereotypes in our society that were created as a result of these racist ideas that were justified by Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Okay, so um, what I was really happy about was that I can make this real world connection for my students and they could apply something from the late 1800s that they were learning about to what they actually saw going on um, in the hallways of their schools. So I just want to give you a brief overview of this lesson before you actually watch it. We had a warm up activity and um, we took this directly from the abstract that is provided in all the lessons if you look on their uh, commission's website. So we have um, a bunch of different images and video clips that show historical and contemporary examples of how Italian Americans may be perceived and labeled in society through the manipulation of media. So this served as our hook. It served as a way for our students to figure out what the lesson was going to be about and to also um, generate some interest. Um, it also, you know, when we're talking about differentiated learning, we have students who are, are different learners, and some of them are visual and audio um, auditory learners, so that gave them an opportunity to um, use their strengths as well. So 
we showed, as you'll see, Mrs. Rock will show some clips, and that brings us to um, a time period in class where students are asked to reflect upon those images and write in their journals. At that point, um, when they're all finished, um, Mrs. Rock discusses, you know, what stereotypes they see today that are prevalent um, and ask them to share their feelings about that. At that point, we try to figure out what are the origins of these stereotypes that you see um, in your daily lives. In the lesson, there were absolutely wonderful excerpts of primary sources that we read with the students that provided an explanation of where these stereotypes were based. And many of them had to do with this whole idea of social Darwinism. So after we read these primary source documents, it allowed me to make that connection now with what we're doing in class, when we're talking about Italian Americans, to what we had just studied in that whole unit on imperialism. So next we moved on to how can we refute all of this sort of racist type, you know, discriminatory beliefs that are being um, perpetrated as, as real science. So we, I, I looked through all of the different lessons um, and tried to find examples of Italian Americans that have contributed greatly to our society. So I was actually pulling from different lessons from the website. And I came up with four Italian Americans and um, each, I had, this, the class was divided into groups and each group learned about one of those Italian Americans. We did what's known as a jigsaw activity. So the students learned about that activity, and then um, they eventually moved on to another group where they taught their classmates about their particular Italian American. Once they learned about these different Italian Americans, they were given time, um, or basically it was the assessment, was a writing assignment. Since my English partner had just been teaching about editorials, she decided that she wanted them to write an editorial, and I'm not going to um, to tell you what that is because she actually explains what the editorial is in the video. Um, so I think that gives you enough background so you'll understand what's going on in the video. Our students um, in the media department taped this 90 minute lesson and edited it down to 8 minutes so hopefully it will make sense to you when you watch it. Um, hi, I'm Emily Rock. I am an English teacher at Oakhurst High School. I have been here for about 10 years. Uh, when I was asked to do this lesson um, about Italian American stereotypes, I really looked at it like an English teacher. So first thing I always think about is purpose. Um, what did I want the kids to sort of see in their own daily lives? We talk a lot about stereotypes in the media. And if you remember, we talked about this idea that like you could look at an ad and think there's nothing wrong with that until you stared at it and stared at it and stared at it. And then you might think, hold on, maybe they're adhering to this. Maybe they're implying this. Because, huh? Peter, what are you doing? Speaking Italian. Peter, you can't speak Italian just because you have a mustache. So I chose that as sort of the opening to our journal. And I always use journals as an opportunity to get into the kids' heads, have them express something, and then relate that to real content. Here's what you're going to talk about in your journal. You can react to that clip, of course. Um, whatever you thought, especially if you have a Italian American heritage and that offended you, I want to know. But also, I want you to tell me what Italian American stereotypes exist in the media. When you think Italian American, what do you think? And lastly, how are these things harmful, uh, particularly to Italian Americans? So their journal question was about their ideas about Italian Americans, and that became the introduction to the ads I showed them and the video clips, the commercials that I showed them. Alright, now this is a really early political cartoon, probably like 1920. Um, and you can see that these are Italian immigrants. Um, here's another one. And this is the Italian, allegedly. What do you notice about his physical structure, Toby? His face. In what way? What is it 
what do you think like it's supposed eight. to recall? Like an eight, right? Did you get that when you saw it? That's um, why it says homo erectus. Yes, it's a, an allusion to homo erectus. Okay, so it says, and this is the caption, one pound of spaghetti, kerchief round the neck, stiletto in the foot skin hands. I don't know what that means. A bunch of garlic gulped down like animals do and talent for shining shoes. So they can sort of trace throughout history that initial anti-immigration ad all the way through to the Jersey Shore, which it really inherently was the same stereotype. Um, it just looked modern and shinier and prettier, but it was the same awful idea. Yeah, I got a mean. Where is your mean? Could I have some of everything? Mm -hmm. I got a nickel. A nickel, huh? My show. I pick you up. Awesome. And that was kind of the beginning of the lesson, and that would lead to new information in the history portion, and eventually what would become their writing assignment. Imagine that you are living in mid-century America and have read an anti-immigration editorial that uses one of the Darwinism and anti-Italian sentiment excerpts as its proof. As a well-educated and forward-thinking citizen, you decide to write a rebuttal of sorts in editorial form to the editor of this local paper. Not only will you express, express the offensiveness of their point of view, but you will use information you have learned today to refute their adherence to stereotypes. So here's what you should do. Hi, I'm Kristen Resch, and I'm a history teacher at Oakcrest High School. I've been here for 13 years, and what I wanted to do was show that you can incorporate the lessons created by the Italian and Italian American Heritage Commission into what any history teacher is doing um, throughout the year. So we just finished up a lesson on imperialism and in that lesson we were talking about social Darwinism and how that acted as um, a motivation for imperialism and also as a justification for imperialism. So how then was Darwin's theory, survival of the fittest, applied to justify or, or even used as a motive for imperialism? Fittest and the best like, country, the more powerful country can take your like, smaller, less powerful So I was able to tie that idea in with the Darwinism and the uh, racist propaganda uh, with Italian Americans migrating to this country. Early 1900s, when immigrants were coming to this country, there was this great fear that these Italian Americans were going to breed with these Anglo-Saxon Americans and was going to like contaminate this race of people. So um, we showed sort of the origins of some of the stereotypes that Mrs. Rock used in her um, introduction and also in her writings then. In your group you're going to read about an Italian American that contributed to American society. Students did were actually really cool. I, uh, 
I obviously rec uh, recognized a few of those names, like Maria Ignacy and uh, and Frank Sinatra, obviously. But it's cool to see uh, to see those people in the basis of the actual culture they uh, that they're in, as opposed to just some sort of figurehead that we we see in pop culture and in a history class, like a math class. Uh, in the end, I think what the kids got out of it was they sort of maybe look at things differently, change their point of view. They're more aware of these things, and they have a lot more positive images of Italian Americans. As you can see from the video, all the students were actively engaged in the lesson. They were, found it very interesting. They were using critical thinking skills in an interdisciplinary format in the cohort between the English and the Social Studies class. They were then able to transfer their learning about Italian-American stereotypes into stereotypes of all cultures. The lesson addressed the common core standards in language arts literacy. Students were reading primary source documents. They were then reading nonfiction documents. They then followed this up with a writing assignment and were incorporating writing skills. This lesson, as in all other lessons that are in this curriculum, are interdisciplinary in format and can be used by teachers among all content areas at the high school level. So now we have Ms. Alexandra Peters, who is going to give us a student's perspective on the curriculum and her experiences. So Alexandra. Hi, my name is Alexandra Peters. And first of all, I want to put out the slide, this is my family because in addition to the academic benefits to this curriculum, I also found it to be extremely personal and universal. So this is actually my family. Jilda is actually featured in the top picture up there. Um, my great-grandfather on the top left, my grandmother in the bottom by the car. Um, from the time I've grown up, I have always lived in an Italian-American household. As a child, I knew the sincere difference between sauce and gravy, which is a big deal. The first time I understood anti-Italian American sentiment, I was sitting at my kitchen table. My now 99-year-old grandfather was talking to me, telling me about how when he was in even elementary school, he experienced racism from students and teachers. I found it almost inconceivable that other students would mock him simply for his race. As I grew older, I became more aware of the prejudice that exists in the world. Though I've never been persecuted against, I feel so connected to this resentment because it practically runs in my blood. In situations about talking about my ethnicity, I usually end up having to explain my heritage strictly due to the fact that my last name is Peters. It stems from the Italian form Di Pietro. The first time I asked my dad why my great-grandfather changed his name, he stated, so that he could get a job. After this lesson, I realized the complexity of that statement. My eight-year-old mind could clearly not comprehend that. My great-grandfather on my father's side changed the title that he was to avoid prejudice. His name, he changed his name for the ability to gain respect in American society. It breaks my heart to imagine so many families having to give up who they are and abandon their heritage to avoid being physically and emotionally abused in America. My great-grandfather also on my mother's side my great-great-grandfathers refused to allow their family members to learn the Italian language so that they would not have an accent and have more opportunity in America. And that simply breaks my heart. Okay, I'm going to go on to some more pictures. That is him up there. Um, here are some other pictures of my family. This, really, this curriculum truly hit me to a personal level because as a student with this type of heritage, I was inspired by it. It raises awareness not only for Italian Americans, but all cultures and immigrants trying to diffuse into American society. It lays a universal foundation for every ethnicity and background, and I found that amazing. Especially receiving an education from a socioeconomic, diver, socioeconomically diverse school, I constantly see the division of culture in the hallways. In a nation known for its equal opportunity, I find it hard to decipher so many, how so many stereotypes have developed over time. 
With this curriculum, I feel like it brought so many subliminal messages to the surface, from stereotypes in video games such as Mario Kart, to TV shows, to successful musicians, Frank Sinatra, my favorite, to politicians, to mathematicians, and even scientists. Through this curriculum, I became awed by the, the number of successful people who were able to overcome their racial backgrounds, as you can see through the connections of not only students, but teachers. And for this, I thank you so much, Jilda, for bringing this to our school. I feel really blessed to be able to provide this kind of experience to not only myself and my heritage, but to so many of my peers who are so diverse in different ways, and it really, truly inspired me. So thank you. So didn't you do a great job? So as we were preparing for this presentation, Alexandra and I were chatting a little bit, and uh, she was telling me the stories about sauce and gravy and growing up in an Italian-American family, and I sat there smiling, going like this, and I said, you know, I have to tell you, my maiden name was Maccarelli. And, <laughs> and as a second-generation Italian-American, I can very easily identify with a lot of the things that she said. So, Dr. Roro Baldessari, thank you so much again for inviting us. It was a pleasure to be here today. Our contact information is up here.